What exactly is a POJO in Java? I've seen a lot of other YouTube videos that claim to explain what a POJO is that are just wrong. POJO sounds weird, sounds fancy, sounds complicated, and it is absolutely none of those things. And you're going to know exactly what it is and why there's some confusion around it by the end of this video. My name's John and I put up a new Java tutorial video every week. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss each week's video. I also have a full Java course available in the link down in the description if you're interested. What is a POJO? Well, you probably know that POJO just stands for plain old Java object. But what exactly does that mean? What makes a class or an object a plain old Java object? Here's exactly what it is. A POJO is categorized not so much by what it has to have to be a POJO, but what it has to not have. There's three basic things. It has to not extend any other class, so it can't be a child class of another class. It can't implement any interfaces, and it can't use any fancy outside annotations. What those three restrictions amount to is just a simple class with no extra stuff that can be used by itself. You don't need any outside libraries or other classes to use it. And that's pretty much all the rules. Everything that you may have seen about needing like a public no args constructor and getters and setters, those are all about something else that we're gonna talk about later in this video, but that's not the definition of a POJO. So for example, let's take a look at this cat class. So this cat class is dead simple. Public class cat, and we have two properties, int age and string name. This is an example of a POJO. It doesn't extend from another class, it doesn't implement any interfaces, and it doesn't have any fancy outside annotations. So this class meets the definition of a POJO. Now if instead this cat uh, extended an animal class, then this would no longer fit the definition of a POJO, because now I need this outside animal class in order to use it. Same thing goes for if it implemented an interface, like um, makes noise. This doesn't fit the definition of a POJO either because I need this outside makes noise interface for it to work. And as for the annotations part, that's a little bit more complicated. But for example, there's this annotation called at entity, and that's a special hibernate annotation which you need hibernate in order to use. So if you had this entity annotation in your class, it would no longer be a POJO. Now the term POJO actually came from this guy named Martin Fowler, who was a programmer who wrote tons of books on software engineering. He came up with the term POJO for one of his talks, and he said, we wondered why people were so against using regular objects in their systems and concluded that it was because simple objects lacked a fancy name. So we gave them one and it's caught on very nicely. Basically people thought they were too cool to use regular objects in their programs. So this guy came up with the name POJO in 2000 and everybody's been using it since. Now here's where I think a lot of people get mixed up. They confuse a POJO with a Java bean. A POJO, as we discussed, is basically any class that can be used on its own. But a Java bean has some additional requirements. It has to have a public no args constructor. All of its properties or instance variables have to be private. It has to have public getters and setters as needed. And it has to be serializable. I've seen a lot of people talk about needing a private no args constructor and getters and setters to be a POJO. But that's not at all true. It doesn't need that to be a POJO. It does need those things to be a Java bean. For example, this cat class here, as we know, is a POJO. But it's not a Java bean for a few reasons. It does have the public no args constructor. Even though it's not explicitly written here, Java will give it one by default. But its instance variables, its properties here, age and name, are not private. And there's no getters and setters for them. And this class is not serializable. So even though it's a POJO, it isn't a Java bean. For example here, let's turn this cat POJO into a Java bean. So we already have the public no args constructor. So how can we show that we already have a no args constructor available? What exactly is it? Well, we can go back to our main method. You probably know that when you create an object, you use the class name cat. So we'll call it my cat equals new cat and do an open close parentheses. That's it. That's a no args constructor. It's just a certain kind of constructor that takes no parameters. So whenever you say new whatever and you send no parameters, that's you using a no args constructor. And we didn't have to write that constructor ourselves in our cat class. Java gave it to us for free. But right now our instance variables are not private and we need to make them private. So private int age and private string name. The next thing we need to be a Java bean is to have getters and setters for these properties. So we can just go ahead and use Eclipse to create those for us. We can just right click here, go down to source, and then generate getters and setters. We can just check the getters and setters that we want and click generate. And that's all we gotta do. Eclipse has generated our getters and setters automatically. Now the last thing we need to be a Java bean is for this class to be serializable. To be serializable, all we have to do is implement the serializable interface. As a quick note, in case you don't know what serializable means, it's basically just a label for Java that tells Java that this class can be written to things like databases and files. So now our POJO has become a Java bean. You'll hear a ton of people talk about POJOs when they really mean Java beans. It's not a huge deal. Sometimes I even catch myself doing it. But you can be happy that you now know the difference. 
If you learned something in this video, let me know with a like and be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss each week's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.